My name is Mary Mulvey, and I'm going to give a little talk on on a churn and uh, its uh, uses. Well, it's ch used for making uh, butter, and then when you make the butter, you'll have buttermilk, so you'll get two uses really out of it, you know. First of all, you, you milk the cow, and you bring in the milk, and you strain the milk, and you take whatever you want for the house out of it, and then you put the rest in a in a big basin or an urn or something, and you let it, let it settle. And when the cream comes to the top of the milk, you skim, uh, skim it off it, and you put it into another basin. And uh, then every evening or morning, you keep skimming it, and uh, you keep saving up the cream and um, then when you have enough after about seven days you put it into the churn and you leave it for about two hours to settle and then you start to, to churn. You keep churning it like this, you know. And, uh, as I say, some places now it takes an awful lot longer than others, you know. And uh, You'd be weary turning the handle, and then the next person would take their turn. That was when we came in from school. We, when you see the turn, you knew that you were going to be uh, have to get your turn. You know, if we were turning at home and uh, somebody came into the house, not a member of the family, just a friend or that, well, they'd be expected to to take a turn and. Uh, do a few turns at the handle, and um, it's just something that was done in every house. My mother would look into it, and she'd say, oh, it's in pinheads now. It would look like cottage cheese before it would really form into butter. It'd be all kind of floating around in the little bits of pinheads, she'd call it. Then, as I say, it could take a few hours before you'd have your butter, you know. And uh, when the butter... Is, is churned and you take it out after it's salt and that you you get those butter spades and you put a certain amount of butter on it and you pass it and keep shaping it in and that until you have it like the shape of a pound of butter. Now, those little spades now might be less than a pound of butter. Some churns have a cork. Uh, in them and you pull out the cork and when you take out the, the cork you put before you take out the cork you put a bucket under it and um, you catch all the you catch all the buttermilk and then that buttermilk then is used for uh, making bread or you can make uh, pancakes make do a lot of things with buttermilk you can even drink it and uh, if it's a few days old it's even nicer you see, if you had a cow and uh, or two, you'd only be using the milk for yourself. But uh, then, you see, you might as well churn it. You know, people long ago were real self-sufficient and they done everything them, uh, themselves. But then certain times uh, of the year when the cow uh, it go dry, you, um, you'd get milk off local, off local farmers, you know. You couldn't afford butter was uh, like that too. It was probably too expensive to be buying. And then, when you had um, when you had the buttermilk, then you were able to make your bread. And um, then, when you had have the milk uh, surplus milk, you could make rice or sago or tapioca, all them things, and bread pudding. And you're a full week at it because when you'd milk in the morning and milk in the evening, and then you have to let the milk. Uh, settle then for maybe about 12 hours before you can take the cream off it. There's a lot of work attached to it for, I suppose, what you get out of it, but then when a cow would calve, we, we used to be delighted because uh, there'd be a, a lot of milk and Mammy would make these pancakes and they were called beast of pancakes, you know, when you think of them. Everybody's butter definitely didn't taste the same, you know. So, uh, some people were able to make churn butter and even even sell it, you know. But now we never, 
we wouldn't have uh, anything like that, you know. We just did enough for ourselves. At that time, there was no such thing as spreadable butter. The, the only thing, uh, the first thing to come out in, in the line of a spreadable butter was a blue band, margarine thing. And uh, the, if you were short, you'd use it, you know. Some people uh, think that when they're eating a pound of butter, they never think of where it where it comes from. But then if they were eating churn butter and they knew it came from a cow, they mightn't uh, eat it, you know. I could tell many a story where we used to used to be milking and there was eight of us and was, whichever one would be milking, uh, whichever one of us would be um, doing the milking, uh, they'd stand, <laughs> there were seven of them, would stand in a line and we'd get the cow. We squirt to milk to see who catch it in their mouth, you know, and it, it wouldn't be sterilized or nothing, you know. <laughs>